Hi everyone, Sonic Show Jaden here, and we finally got a roundup of some new major updates revolving Sonic Movie 3 from insider information about the movie, posted by a source at Cineor, yes that's their actual name, but it's important to first note that everything covered in this video will not feature any spoilers, and I also won't be covering any of the content previously shown in my Sonic Movie 3 animatic video, which if you are looking for spoilers, you can go watch that first. But for this news drop, we've got some new set photos and clips, including covering one clip in particular that's getting taken down everywhere. So much so that as of recording this, I can't even find it up literally anywhere anymore. Even the sketchy websites, it's just gone. I also want to cover some new info we got on the current progress of filming for Sonic Movie 3, which also gives us a tease of when we're getting the trailer for that too, with Paramount's update on the current timeline of things, a topic that I know many of you are worried about, with most fearing that this movie's getting delayed into 2025, and that's something I definitely want to cover and clear up today. We also got a fun side story, which is that Sonic Movie 1's original concept art and design got leaked, and since seeing it, I've been pounding coffee to force myself to stay awake, afraid of the horrors that await me when I close my eyes and drift into dreamland. So lots of big stories to cover, but first, hey, we've all been there, potentially getting epic gamer loot online, when suddenly your ISP is sending you letters, fines, and throttling your speeds. Well that's no good. And now with NordVPN, today's sponsor, you can not only avoid those, but also trackers, ad companies, and more all with a single click. You can also remove geo-blocking and circumvent licensing restrictions that streaming platforms have, unlocking thousands of titles for any of the services you already have. Nord features a threat protection that blocks malware, ads, and checks your PC for any vulnerabilities, helping you browse a bit safer online. Finally, I'm safe online! They also offer a service called NordPass to store and encrypt all of your passwords, which is important and not something you should just be leaving open in a document, or Google's password manager, which could be easily compromised. But you wouldn't do that though, right? You wouldn't put your most valuable passwords on Google's cloud thing that gets hacked all the time, right? You would not do that, right? It's one of the most popular VPNs for a reason, and you can get four months for free at nordvpn.com slash sonic show, and it's in the description below. Thank you, Nord, for sponsoring this video. Also, I forgot to mention it, but drop a like or I will curse your entire existence for the next seven years. And I do have the name of everyone who watches this and doesn't like and sub automatically appearing in a book, one in which I will curse shortly after the release of this. So quickly like and sub now, or seven years of bad luck. Listen, I don't make the rules, but I will be following them out in a, oh, wait, never mind. I thought about it, I actually did make the rules. Anyways, there's a ton of big stories to get through, so let's get right into it with this. So for the first story, I actually want to begin with those Sonic 1 concept picks that recently leaked, since that's a pretty quick story we can get through really fast. Now this was originally posted on Sonic 1 costume designer Deborah McGuire's own portfolio website. We got five photos showing off the cast costumes, and one small thing to note from this one is that it's kind of interesting how they used red carpet photos of the actors' face to work with and make the costume around that. But what's actually more interesting, arguably the only interesting part, is the new really high quality render we got of the original movie Sonic design right before they fixed him up. And again, I'm pretty sure this is not only a brand new render, but is also really high quality. This might be one of the highest quality ones we've gotten yet. And while the original Sonic design isn't great, it could be worse because we also see a horrifying sketch no offense to the artists at all, as this was probably self-aware and intentional on their part. But Sonic looks like a literal nightmare creature here. You can hear the shakiness in my voice, because I'm shaking afraid. So much so that I feel like within the next three years, I could actually see an indie horror game studio making this abomination the star of their next mascot-centered game. Now, a lot of people online are arguing and saying these picks are recent, mostly because of these outfits not appearing in the first Sonic movie at all, but this is actually believed to be from 2018, which minus the change from black to white undershirt, this is the exact outfit Tom and Maddie wore in Sonic Movie 2. So I do understand why people are coming to that conclusion. That said, these are from Sonic Movie 1, despite the fact that I know Tom wears the brown jacket in Sonic Movie 2, just that doesn't change anything. And I have seen a lot of people confused about that aspect, so I thought I'd clear it up real quick. Now there's also some new Robotnik pics, which I'll show here, just showing some different variations of his outfit from Sonic Movie 1, or at least the non-torn up version of that ripped red outfit we see Robotnik wear at the very end of the first movie in The Mushroom Planet. However, other than those, there wasn't really anything else of note in this story. So with that out of the way, we'll move on to the next one, which 
is significantly larger and actually relevant to the third movie's plot. So next, this story is another one that is also just from a post that recently dropped, but via the source that I've mentioned earlier, whom prior to this I've never heard of, and they're named Sinior. I think I'm pronouncing that right, I really can't think of how else I could be messing that up, maybe Sinor? But at the end of the day, aren't we all Sinors? Now after looking into him, he's most known for making posts on Twitter and Instagram, solely covering Sonic Movie 3 and Knuckles series news. And well, Sinior made a brand new post, reporting some of the information they received saying quote Sonic and Shadow were teaming up which not to pause one line into it but this is something that doesn't surprise me or likely anyone who's played Sonic Adventure 2 or even just knows the character Shadow so this is the closest thing to a quote unquote spoiler in the video but even then I'm really hesitant to call it that since no joke literally anyone with half a brain could easily assume this especially considering Shadow's core character is being an anti-hero that while is at odds with Sonic has good intentions and can work together for the common greater goal. Sinior's post continues with, they had to make a lot of freeze frames because of Sonic and Shadow's emotions where they use their power to get through GUN. To which that is a direct quote from their source, but Sinior himself adds, a bit like with Sonic 1 when he did that with the missiles. And this is also something that on the baseline of there being slow-mo freeze frames, we also could expect since both films have featured this and with both of their main gimmicks being fast and the other two movies having these type of scenes, yes, it's a pretty safe assumption, Sonic movie 3 will have freeze frame scenes. However, the part that gets interesting is it mentioning them trying to get through GUN, which like Sonic Adventure 2, it seems this movie will also feature the subplot of GUN going after Sonic and Shadow at the same time as Eggman, returning to wreak havoc on Sonic. We don't know this part for sure yet, but it's almost certain he's the one that frees Shadow, whether remotely or from the spaceship itself, which we also don't know if they'll keep as the arc or change it to be something entirely different. Now, from the design of it in the animatics, and this will be the only reference to the animatics it make. It does look like the arc, so that's just what I'm going to refer to it as, at least for the rest of the video. So before we go into the next story with the set photos, I want to say, whether they do the somewhat corny plot device of everyone confusing Shadow for Sonic, despite how apparent their differences are, even down to the color and head shape being entirely separate, it's also possible Shadow wreaks havoc, and just by him clearly being a different type of creature, GUN associates Shadow as being part of Sonic's clique of colorful autism friends. Regardless, I don't want to speculate too much, just cover the actual information, as personally, I don't think this speculation is very interesting or productive. It's only really useful when trying to give context to connect a bunch of ideas together. And I'm not trying to drag on this video. So next, this leads me right into the story about the set photos, as there's immediately two that I can safely show, but the rest, not so much. Especially with the clip that's getting taken down from Twitter and YouTube, in which they've done such a good job removing it, I can't find this clip literally anywhere anymore. So seemingly it's actually gone until some courageous soul who decided to archive it comes forward and presents it to the public. So because of that, the only images I can show are two particular still images I have from it. An update, these photos are so blurry and so bad that it's really not worth risking a strike on the channel or this video I spent a ton of time on just getting deleted. So I decided it'd be pretty easy for me to just remake the images like how I did for the animatic as well as also using a high quality image of the same blue screen because Man, is the quality bad, but I'm still going to tweet out the images if you want to see them. At Sonic underscore show. Now with these still set photos we got, these are really dark, and it isn't even initially clear at all what we're supposed to be even looking at with this first picture, as it's just a photo of a blue screen, which we know is from a soundstage in Pinewood Studios, one of the largest movie production studios in all of the UK. Now this all becomes somewhat clear with the second picture, that this is what appears to be Shadow's pod that we see from the post credit scene of the second movie. But but other than these two blurry images, there isn't much else since, since I never got the original video before it was struck down. But as of these photos themselves, there's a couple factors that make me think, while it is so dark we can't see, it's also very likely that Jim Carrey or someone else significant is on set, which would explain two major factors about this. The first one being, why are they even filming this part in live action if the background is going to be all CGI, which we can tell by the very obvious massive blue screen. However, if it's just Shadow in the scene, who is all also an entirely CGI character, then it wouldn't make sense to even film that part practically if the rest is just going to be keyed out. Now, the other reason I think this is that despite the clip only being four seconds long and not showing anything else in the scene clearly at all, it's still getting taken down in an attempt 
much stronger than any of the Sonic 2 wedding scene stuff. As well as the fact that with how Paramount has been somewhat careful to not show yet how Robotnik's appearance is going to change in Sonic Movie 3, they likely are really clamping down on leaks so they can be the ones to reveal Robotnik's new design without some random person taking a sneak photo on set, essentially trying to undercut the release buildup, or even selling some of these set clips, the same way skeezy music producers sell leaks like that all the time. And a lot of the comments might not get this, but Paramount taking all these videos down is something I totally get and respect. And while I will cover them, as leaks are a genie you can't put back in the bottle, and once even one person reports on them they're just out in the wild, ideally there would be zero leaks. And even though I would have less content to make, which I know sucks, I barely upload as it is, regardless of that, the mystery would admittedly be a little bit better. That said, I am the number one source of Sonic news, so how, how stupid would I be to let everyone else cover this stuff and then just ignore it myself, especially when I don't even personally like or agree with the ways that most people are reporting on these leaks, as there's always either something missing or they're just doing it in an uninteresting and kind of boring way with no fun. Regardless, with Sonic Movie 2's release buildup, we got a ton of set photos and clips, including even some full scenes like the wedding one. However, it appears this is not going to be the case with Sonic Movie 3. Three, especially since they've previously been a little strict about taking stuff down. If before they went to a 12, this time they're going a 1200. Like some of these recent leaks and stuff have gotten taken down so quickly that I didn't even get to see them myself. Sometimes a third party has had to send me this stuff because I just missed it. But moving on from that, the next story is I want to go over some of the information regarding the storyboards and animatics themselves. Now, reminder, I'm not going to be talking about the two animatics that leaked, or at least giving any spoiler details about them. However, fear not, as I am a man of my word, so spoiling things I won't be doing. Now, previously, both of these weren't confirmed, and that was until the Knuckles series trailer, released about a week or two ago, which did confirm the first animatic. So while the Knuckles animatic has been fully confirmed now, just for clarity's sake, it's worth pointing out that might just change, since Sonic Movie 3's animatic now at least has some credits to go alongside it with. There's certainly multiple people working on the story boards, and it's not just one guy. But that said, the one we do know is named Ethan Eng. And yes, I had to watch a video on how to pronounce that, so I know it's right. Don't try to correct me and educate me in the comments because you'll just look dumb, stupid. Now, Ethan is one of the story artists working on these projects, and as an artist, I can look at their previous work and storyboards to see if it has any resemblance to the Sonic Movie 3 one, which honestly, since doing that, I've realized most storyboards look eerily similar. And it's definitely not impossible that the two we've previously seen were by him, but just like the set clip, I couldn't even play the animatics for you if I wanted to. So let's just move on to next. We got a small update on the crew behind the storyboard, which is that someone named James Atkinson is the main editor for the animatics, presumably also of the ones we saw before, but with them storyboarding both the entire movie and the miniseries, there's certainly a good handful of people working on this one, so I imagine each of these guys did a quarter to a third of the animatic, but of course that's just depending on how many there were actually working on it. Regardless, moving on to the next story, I also want to touch on the dialogue and discourse that I'm seeing everywhere online, which is that since Sonic Movie 3's development has gone through both the writers and actors strike, many people are highly doubting they'll be able to make their slated release date of December this year, which while a delay is possible, Paramount ultimately is the one who set the date. And while it may seem this way to us, who think it's very likely to be delayed given their current situation, despite all that, Paramount actually seems to be confident this isn't the case. During the writers and actors strikes, since those were the two most major industries striking, the production was still able to proceed as planned, but they began filming without actors. And the result of this will likely be a script change to have a lot less of the movie featuring live action cast members, something that would normally hurt how the end product is received critically, but with Sonic on the other hand, less live action actors and more colorful anthro creatures is exactly what the audience wants here, and the live action elements are actually something fans consider to be holding the films back. So this is a situation that just like how the 2007 to 2008 writer's strike was a major negative to most TV shows and creations, there were still a couple that benefited. For a quick example, if Breaking Bad's first season wasn't during the strike, the showrunner was going to yeet off Aaron Paul's character, Jesse, someone who 
was actually a very important piece to the success of that show. And I make this point to say, well, yes, strikes are never fun. You know, get your money, laborer, whatever. I don't, I don't really care. At the same time, you have to smell the roses and realize that, yeah, a lot of entertainment's going to get pretty bad and suck, or technically already has since the strike's now over. I say this point of Breaking Bad to show there can be some positives that come out of the strike. And if you guys truly do want less humans, more Sonic characters, then I have a feeling you're going to be getting exactly what you want with this movie. Now, another important thing to bring up is this also doesn't necessarily mean quote unquote crunch at all. Because since the animators and everyone else has been on the same time schedule, just rearranged around, the only people that are going to be crunching are the actors and voice actors. Which, with Ben Schwartz recently announcing he's only just begun recording his lines for this movie, this all still makes me think they're going to be able to make it in time. As also previously in interviews, Ben has said that recording his lines are one of the last parts of the production. So with everything filming wise wrapping up in the next month or two, and with how long they've been working on the CGI for now, I think things are seemingly all good and in the green. And I would only begin to have doubts and think it would be delayed by how Paramount presents. And I would only begin to have doubts and think it would be delayed by how Paramount and by how Paramount and pre by how Paramount presents and shares their information during these next couple months. As well as the fact that they seemingly wouldn't just release a new date without a trailer to go before it and soften the blow. So I personally wouldn't expect a change release date anytime soon, at least until we get that trailer. But even in that scenario, I personally do still think this is going to release on time, but who knows? At the end of the day, I'm just making an educated guess with all the info I currently have. I'm no mind reader or psychic. With that, three new Sonic mobile games have been unveiled, and I know mobile games, but these ones actually look really cool. And they're going to be spread among various subscription services with some of the games not even having any service, so I think there's a little something for everyone there. I made a banger video going over all three, and you can check it out in the title card above. With that, like if you liked, I oh, come on, I know you liked the video. Might as well make it official. And remember, seven years of bad luck if you don't. Same goes to subscribing. If you're not subscribed, you still get the bad luck. Sorry, bucko. And comment your thoughts on the Sonic Movie 3 news. Another video in a few days. Support the sponsor, Nord, helps me. And you really should check it out because if I get more deals like this, I can make more videos and put more time into this. And that's probably what you guys want me doing. You don't care if I make money in other ways. So check them out. Join my Discord. We're going to start doing movie watch parties in there. I think it'll be fun. And that's everything. Lots of love and peace. Peace! I've been going lazy on you recently, but you gotta admit, that was a proper f***ing peace.